I just wanted to make a quick cup of tea before I started, which I've done. It's a little bit hot, so I'm going to pop it down there to let it cool off while I talk to you about pandas. Now, pandas is an absolutely essential Python library, especially if you want to be a data scientist or a data analyst. Why? Because in those fields, you will spend most of your time preparing data. It's what data scientists spend, I don't know, 60, 70, 80% of their time doing. Don't just take my word for it. Look at this article from Forbes and this one too. Now, it's considered the more sort of boring part of the job. It's the bit that you have to do before you can do the exciting stuff, but it is absolutely essential. And depending on where you get your data from and, and the sort of tasks you're doing, this is something that you might want to try to automate. Now, Pandas will enable you to do your data preparation, and it might even enable you to, do, to automate those processes. So it's essential that you know how to use it. And in this video, I want to give you a short tutorial on Pandas, uh, what it is, how it works, how to use it, so that by the end of watching this video, you'll have a lot more insight into what it's capable of. And not only that, but you know how it's used and, and where to go next to learn more about it. Because whatever you're doing, whether you want to do Kaggle competitions or you want to do your own data projects or you're working for someone else, you're going to have to get your data in order before you can do that analysis. And that's what Pandas will enable you to do. I think it's a great library. It was created by Wes McKinney in 2010. Um, and really, it's just got better and better ever since then. I love it. Let's go and have a look. I'm going to grab my tea. We'll go over to the desk and take a closer look. We're going to be working through the tutorial that's on the Quanticon website. They have a Pandas tutorial there, and that's the one we're going to be looking at. Um, if you haven't seen the Quanticon website and you're interested in Python, do go and take a look. I think it's one of the best resources on Python that there is. It's one of my favorite Python websites, and I use it all the time. I'd really recommend that. Um, go and take a look at the Pandas page and uh, download the Jupyter Notebook because that's the one we're going to be working through. You're also going to need Python working on your system. And I think the best way of doing that is by using Anaconda. Uh, there are lots of good reasons for that. I mean, one, it's platform agnostic, so it doesn't matter whether you've got Ma a Mac or a Windows system, you will be able to use that. And it will also install all of the, the modules and libraries that you're likely to need. So go and do that. What I've done is I've put a link to a Facebook post in the description that contains all of the links that you're likely to need so that I haven't had to put lots of links in the YouTube description. Um, and when you've done that and you're all ready to go, let's get on with the tutorial. So I want to quickly run through this tutorial with you and I want to show you how I try to get as much as I can from a tutorial like this and how I think you could too. So it starts with an overview of Pandas showing how it's increased in popularity over the last few years. And then we get this line of code here which shows you how Pandas is almost always imported as PD like NumPy is imported as NP. And then we come to the first really important bit, actually, because you're introduced to a data type in Pandas, which is the series. Now, the series isn't as important a data type as the data frame, which we'll come on to next. But as someone that's never seen Pandas before, uh, you can read this explanation, but it doesn't go into much detail. And if I was approaching this and, and seeing this for the first time, where it says you can think of a series as a column of data, such as a collection of observations on a single variable, I might want to find out a little bit more about that. So I would do two things. I would do a quick search on what is a series in pandas, which brings up a lot of useful explanations. You can see that the series is a one-dimensional labeled array capable of holding data of any type. Uh, and there are some examples there. But crucially as well, I would go to the documentation. It's so important that whatever you're doing, you always look at the documentation. So I would read up on the series in pandas uh, from the pandas documentation. And you can see here, you've got this class, pandas.series. And we encounter that next. So I can't overstress how important it is to read the documentation. It's something that you really must do, not just with pandas, but with any module that you're learning and with Python itself. The documentation is really, really good. So we've got here s equals pd dot series, uh, and then we have some parameters here. So read in the documentation 
what this class is, how it works. It shows you all of the parameters here and there will be parameters listed here that aren't necessarily uh, present in this example here because not all of the par parameters are necessary uh, and it shows you the attributes and the methods too. So that is something that you should do all through your learning journey as you're learning this type of stuff read up on it as you go along not so that you become expert on it but just so that you're aware of what the capabilities are and how it works so we run this line here we've now created a series s with four random numbers named daily returns and then we see that you have operators that can be applied to this variable s just like you can apply similar operators uh, to numpy arrays and we get multiplied by an integer here and we've taken the absolute value of s here but then we see there are other things available too now we know this because we've already had a look at the documentation so here we have s.describe and if we go to the documentation you can see that uh, describe is a method that generates descriptive statistics that summarize the central tendency dispersion and shape of a data sets distribution excluding NAN values. So if we want to have a closer look at describe we can do that by clicking on it and here we have again the parameters uh, it tells us what describe does it shows us what the parameters are and then we get some examples of describe in action so when you run this cell you can see that uh, we get some descriptive statistics about this series I mean it's trivial because it can only contains four numbers we can relabel the index so instead of having the label 0 1 2 3 we can give them names so if these were stocks we could give them the ticker symbol so Amazon Apple Microsoft and Google and if we run that that's what we get uh, and then you find if you know a little bit about dictionaries in Python then the syntax that you can use for series is similar to dictionaries so here if we want to see the value of uh, the label Amazon we can do that we can set Amazon to zero so that's a very brief introduction to series but really when you work with pandas it's data frames that do most of the hard work and we have a brief introduction to data frames here you know and where a series has a single column of data a data frame has several columns of data one for each variable and it's analogous to an excel spreadsheet always go back to the documentation i really can't stress that enough data frames are so important it's something that you really must try to understand now for this part of the tutorial you can download a csv file or you can access it direct um, from github which we will do shortly on this next line of code we have read csv now read csv is really important and it's something that you will use a lot in pandas and again i would suggest that you go to the documentation and find out as much as you can about read csv and if we run this cell we access the data and uh, we see that we have a pandas data frame here it's t the type of df is a pandas data frame and then if you look at this data frame you can see that it does look like something that you might see in excel but pandas is far more versatile than excel so you can use standard slicing notation to slice your data frame if you just want to see rows two to four or you can put in a list to see certain columns and we can do that there now this next attribute is very powerful it's the i lock attribute um, now if you want to read more about that go back to the documentation and you get lots of examples of how to use it you'll see that it's used for indexing and it's primarily integer position based so let's go and see how it's been used here uh, and it's been used to select rows two to four and columns zero to three there is another indexing attribute which is just loc without the i go to the documentation and you'll see that this allows you to access a group of rows and columns by labels so you have a choice of whether you want to do it numerically or by labels if we go back to the tutorial now you can see df.lock uh, with a mixture of integers and labels will give you this so we've selected rows two three and four and columns country and tc gdp now if you have a look at this output here we have an index zero one two three four five six seven but actually we want the index to be the country label rather than these numbers here and the way to do that is to use this set index method now if we go back to the pandas documentation and we have a look at the methods you can see here we have the set index method uh, and it tells you the parameters here set the data frame index using existing columns we click on that now we see the full explanation of how to use set index and now we see that the index has changed 
Using dot columns allows us to change the column names like that. Uh, and they've been changed from pop and TC GDP to population and total GDP. And in this cell here, we're multiplying the whole population column by a thousand uh, so that the units are correct. And this cell here really shows you how powerful pandas is. In one line of code, we've managed to add a whole new column that calculates the GDP per capita from the total GDP. You can see how powerful pandas is. You can do so much with just one line of code. And then the other thing that pandas can do is it can do lots of different types of plots. So if we import matplotlib here, we can just take the column that we want to plot. And using the plot method, we're able to plot a bar chart in just one line of code. And if you want to explore how plot works in more detail, again, go back to the documentation and read up on how it works. You'll see there are a lot of parameters there that you can use to generate all sorts of different plots that you might be interested in. I really like the plotting feature in pandas. It might not be good enough for presenting your data, but certainly for exploratory plots, it's really, really good. Now that plots all very well, but we want to change the order of it. So in the next cell, we're sorting the values by GDP per capita. So we're taking this column here and we're sorting the values according to this column. We don't want them in ascending order. And if we plot that now, we get a plot that's easier to read. Python has several different ways of accessing data over the internet. The request library is definitely worth getting to know if you're going to be trying to find data sources online. If it's not something you're familiar with, then you know go and have a look at some documentation or some tutorials on how to use it we will run this line of code here which has just downloaded the US civilian unemployment rate now I can show you the file that we've downloaded that is this one so it goes back to 1948 all the way up to March 2019 and we can have a look at the first value and we can have a look at the second value and so on now the great thing about data like this is that we can make pandas recognize the dates column. If we use read CSV and we say parse dates equals true, pandas will recognize the date column. If we have a look at the data, we can see that that's a data frame. And if we use this dot head, which shows you the first five values, we can see that the date column has been parsed as dates. Uh, and it is our index. We can see that we've got 855 data points with a mean value of 5.8, a standard deviation of 1.6, and we get the quartile values as well. Let's plot that data, and it looks like that. Just some final thoughts, really. I mean, practice is key, so if you want to get better at using pandas, find some data sets that uh, really inspire you, something you're really interested in because you're more likely to stick with it then. Things that we didn't cover in the tutorial that we probably will need to cover at some point in the future is how to merge data sets. So you might have a couple of data sets that uh, you want to put together. There are ways of merging data in Pandas too, uh, and we'll look at that next time. But I've also linked to some resources on my Facebook post, which is linked to from this description, that will help you with that. I really love Pandas. I'm still learning how to use it, but it's so versatile. It can do so much. It really is worth the effort. Good luck with it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.